joining a club of just four other countries. Reports this week indicate that India is all ready to sync up Indian computers with the domestically developed rubidium atomic clock that was launched last year in a 2G navigation satellite. This clock was developed by India to be used with the Indian Regional Navigational Satellite System IRNSS or NAVIC. This system was developed after the American government refused the American government controlled GPS access to India during the Kargil War. The first seven satellites that were launched as a part of this IRNSS or NAVIC navigation system carried imported rubidium clocks, while the indigenously developed one was launched in May of last year on navigation satellite for the first time. So what exactly are atomic clocks and why does India need its own? Atomic clocks are the most precise clocks that we know and they are true to a billionth of a second. These clocks measure time by tracking the resonant frequency of atoms that are used in it. Now, if we just go back to high school physics and chemistry, we know that atoms and electrons in them carry varying energy levels. When an electron gets excited or it gets more energy, it transitions to a higher orbit. This is done in a clock using a certain frequency of electromagnetic radiation that the electron and thus the atom absorbs and then the atom tends to oscillate. By fine-tuning the microwave radiation frequency that can transition the most number of atoms to various states and let them come back, and this energy oscillation can be calculated to an extremely high degree of accuracy. An atomic clock made with a cesium atom was the standard measuring unit that was used to define one second under the SI system. It is also used in the definition of International Atomic Time TAI, which a number of synced atomic clocks globally maintain. A cesium atomic clock is also the basis for the GMT or the UTC time system, which factors in leap seconds and fractions of a second's change that is caused by the rotation of the Earth. But why do navigational systems need an atomic clock? Why not just regular quartz crystal clocks? Well, navigational satellites also use atomic clocks because of the high degree of precision that is required to calculate these distances. If there is even a small error in an atomic clock, even a billionth of a second, it can carry centimeters or meters wide errors because the errors get magnified. The time difference between different satellites at different orbits and different locations are used to triangulate the location point on Earth. These satellites do indeed carry quartz crystal clocks, which are accurate for human time telling, but don't really have the high precision of atomic clocks. Among all these various types of atoms that are used in clocks, the most popular and widely used type of atomic clock is the cesium atomic clock. In such atomic clocks, the cesium atom is super cooled to almost absolute zero. The one that was developed by ISRO uses a rubidium atom. ISRO's previous navigation satellites also carry rubidium atomic clocks that were imported from this European manufacturer called Astrium. The first seven satellites of the IRNSS or the NAVIC system were launched with three imported atomic clocks each. All the way back in 2018 itself, it was reported that nine of these 21 atomic clocks showed errors, which then led to ISRO planning for backup satellites for the navigation system. Atomic clocks on these satellites and even GPS satellites are not foolproof. They are prone to failure due to various reasons, just like other clocks are. So how will NAVIC be used? We still use GPS, which is an American government controlled system. The Indian government controlled would be NAVIC, which is the alternative to GPS. NAVIC itself was approved by the government over 15 years ago at almost a cost of 1,420 crores. This system will cover the Indian subcontinent landmass, of course, and waters extending for 1,500 kilometers beyond the Indian boundaries. This system is already operational and is used in many navigational and transportation systems already. However, NAVIC requires new hardware in devices, especially phones, to be compatible. The transmitter, the receiver, and the chipset are accessible in some new mobile device handsets 
but the default used by the Indian public continues to remain GPS. It is expected that when India is completely ready to roll out its NAVIC system globally and across the Indian subcontinent, a lot of us going forward will be using new phones that we will be able to use both with GPS as well as with NAVIC.